Hey everyone, let's get started before I start talking too much and let's jump right into the scene. يلا يا فتحي تعالى معانا نقعد تحت في القهوة. No thank you. So let's watch it one more time and I know you're like what is going on? But we'll talk about it in a second. Okay, one more time. يلا يا فتحي تعالى معانا نقعد تحت في القهوة. No thank you. Okay, come on. But let's just go back to the very beginning part. That's going to be the topic. Yalla, Fatha. Yalla, Fatha. Ta'ala, ma'ana, fi la. No, thank you. Okay, so we watched a scene three times from a show that you probably have no idea. Um, it's called Farah Layla, and I will talk a little bit about me later, but first I just want to dissect this scene, or at least the few seconds that we've watched. So this language, if you're wondering, is Arabic, and it's the Egyptian dialect, dialect of Arabic, and it's a show. Um, these uh, are three principal characters, or three of the main characters. And so I don't know if you have any um, foundation in Arabic, but I just want to dissect um, some of the words that are used here and see what I can learn and what maybe you and us can learn too. So let's start with the, the these words. I really want to pin. Let's just start with this first phrase. Yalla, Fatha. So, what did that sound like? Probably like, oh. So this is an older gentleman, and he said, Yalla, ya Fatha, ibni. I think that's what he said. And so, Yalla is an expression that you will hear in a lot of TV shows and in real life. It means roughly like come on let's go yalla yalla maya yalla yalla it's a fun word to say i really like it so he says yalla ya fatih so ya is a prefix i'm not sure i'm not a linguist i'm not sure what part of speech you would call it but it is a way to address someone um you put it before their name so in this case his name is fatih so he says, yalla, like, let's go, ya fata. And then an interesting piece that he says at the end of that phrase is ibni. So ibni, ibn is son and ibni is my son. And I love this expression because it really shows you something about the culture. This, this guy over here is not his son. Neither of these men are his son. But in this context, it's kind of like a term of endearment. So altogether, he said, Yalla ya fata ibni. And um, if you just look at the scene, look at their faces right now, would you say they're happy or sad? Let's just go with sad. And so they are, in fact, um, it is a serious situation. And the guy that was awarding the plants, Mr. Fata, he is um, stressed at the moment. And so they're inviting him somewhere. So let's just go back and play that, that first sentence. And then we'll listen to the rest. Yalla, Fatha. Ta'ala ma'ana no'at taht fi la. Okay, so this next piece is a big chunk. Um, what does it sound like? I know you're like, what? But when I say sound like, I literally mean sound. When I hear those first two words, he says, Talamana. Like it just sounds like a song, like ah, ah, ah. so I just I, I'm I'm zeroing in on that because I think sound is such an important part of language and it just sounds so different. It's it's coming from here. It's like ah tala tala mana. So uh tala is like come. It's a uh, De derivation or variation of the word ta'i, which is like come, or I think the modern standard Arabic is ta'ati, 
Tapati, come. So he's, this is in the, like, the command form, come, like, Ta'ala, Ta'ala. And he, you can hear the emphasis in his voice, Ta'ala. And then Ma'ana is with us. So Ma is with, and then the Na is us, come with us, Ta'ala Ma'ana, Ta'ala Ma'ana. And so that's that part. So it's an invitation, Ta'ala Ma'ana. Um, and I like that phrase too because it's practical. It's something that you could use if you were speaking with Arabic friends or people that spoke Arabic from any country, really. Um, if if you just say, hey, come with us, ta'ala mana, you could gesture to them and then use those words. I like that phrase because it's practical and I hear it all the time. People use it, ta'ala mana. Um, another thing I like to do is when I'm learning a new sound before I even get to the definition is just to play around with the sound because like you'll hear um, that that's kind of like not a Western sound or at least maybe not that far back. So I like to just play around in the mirror like Talamana and I think it helps with my accent and it just helps with sounding more authentic. So of course, now we're talking about the meaning, but even before we get to meaning, it's fun to just kind of play around with the words. Okay, so now we got, we heard the first part, uh, Yalla ya Fata ibni, uh, come on, um, Mr. Fata, my son. Once again, this is figurative language, it's not his son. And then he says, Ta'ala ma'ana, come with us. And now we want to find out, well, come with us where? And these, these next few words are interesting. They're kind of, they're weird, but I like them. And um, we'll hear some more. Oh, thank you. Shukran, oh, sorry. Wrong part. Not that part. That was English, obviously. Okay. So he says, Okay. A mouthful. Got that part. Come with us. Nod. I'm not an expert. I'm not. I'm not fluent. But I do believe he's saying, "Come with us. Sit tahat under filkahwa in the cafe." So let me just review that again. Talamana, come with us. Nod. Sit tahat under or downstairs in this case. Fi which is in El Kahawa. Kahawa literally means coffee, but in this case is cafe. So he's saying, come with us downstairs and sit in, in the cafe and they'll have coffee in the cafe. So a little bit about uh, the word nod, um, you'll hear it in so many contexts, but in this case, it, it literally means sit. And so he's using it like nod, sit. And with the N sound, we know it's we, so he's it's including all three gentlemen. He's saying, Tala, Mana, Nod, sit, we sit. Tahit, Tahit, under, this literally means under, but in this case, there's a cafe downstairs, so they're using it like come, sit, downstairs, uh, Nod, oh, Tahit, on downstairs, Fee, Fee, it's a preposition, is that right? In, sit, in, Fee, El Cajo. Um, or maybe he says ahoa. So you'll hear that often. Anything that starts with the cough, is it? It is often like it's cut to um, a hamza. And so instead of saying kahoa, they'll say ahoa. And kahoa, ahoa, it means coffee, literally. In this case, he's inviting him to the cafe. So kahoa can be coffee. It could also be cafe. So, um, I know this is probably crazy, but so now let's kind of go back to the beginning of where we started the scene and see if it sounds any more intelligent. Okay, I want to get it to certain. No, thank you. Any different? Any better? So I hope you were able to learn um, some words, feel like I did. And Tala, Mayana, come with us. Yalla, Yafata, Ibni. Come on, 
come, my son. Ta'ala man, come with us. No, let's sit. Tahit downstairs. Fil kahwa. In the cafe. Yeah. So, next, um, that was just a sample. I just I wanted to get this project started. Um, now um, I want to talk about um, a little bit about my background, not too much, and then we'll talk about another scene. My name is Maya. I have been learning Arabic for a little over three years, and I'm just really excited about the language. Um, I've had several teachers. One of my early teachers was um, Professor Mahmoud al Kafawri. He's Egyptian. And um, he introduced me to this way of learning where he introduced media. And this, these are some of the exercises or the kinds of exercises that we did. And it just, it just ignited this excitement in me about the language. So I've been watching um, Arabic TV shows, primarily from Egypt for several years. And um, I just really enjoy the, the media itself, but I also enjoy the sounds of the Egyptian dialect. As you may or may not know, um, I'm sorry, um, Arabic has um, many different dialects depending on what country the speakers are from. Um, it also has a modern standard Arabic that is well understood and um, it's not necessarily spoken. It's used in broadcasts, it's new, used in newspaper. newspaper. Um, it, it's used, it's the written form. This is a huge topic. I'm not even gonna get into it, but, but basically Arabic has two main forms. It has spoken and written. The written is the modern standard Arabic. Anyway, long story short, um, I both are both are important. Um, it's not uh, which one is better or which one. It's they they both serve serve different purposes. Obviously, spoken is what people speak, and written is what is written, and it's also used in broadcast journalism, etc. Anyway, um, I found that watching shows is a way for me to pick up on some spoken dialect. And it's also a way for me just to enjoy the learning process. And so I wanted to do this as kind of a project to um, help myself, to help myself learn, to really kind of solidify or fossilize some of the concept of, concepts that I've already learned, but maybe just share some of my enthusiasm with others. And um, I think it's a method that can probably be used for any language, like anything is to watch shows. And one of the things that I'm still learning is how to listen and how to watch shows because these shows don't have any subtitles. So it's like, well, I'm not going to know what they're saying. But even if you're a beginner, you can still just watch these shows. Um, and then you, you have to find a way to watch them without getting too frustrated because you're not going to know. But the cool thing about Arabic shows is that there is a level of drama. And so they, it's just a natural part of how they act. I really enjoy it where um, you can pick up on what's going on by the context, by the shade, by the lighting of the scene, by their expressions. It's just a naturally very intense language. And the way they film their shows, it, it, it portrays that as well. So um, after a while of hearing some of these same expressions, you'll start to be like, you'll start, start to hear some of the same words. And you'll also start to hear some of these sounds. And what I like to do is while I'm watching is to repeat it, even if I don't know what they're saying. So when I first heard Ta'ala, I was like, Ta'ala. Ah. It's like I just sing it. Even some people said Arabic, in particular Egyptian, sounds like they're singing Ta'ala, mana. It has this sing. Ah. And so I like to play around with it just to have fun with the sounds that are, that sounds that are coming out of their mouth because these sounds are very different. Um, so that's part of what this exercise is about for me. I'm hoping to do some more of these and... We'll see. I don't know if it's helpful or not, but I'm enjoying just the, the process of, of watching and, and learning. Thanks. Shukran, Mr. Hassan. Tfadil, I'll take you to the water and sit. Not what I meant to do.